in a really tutorial, just a technical tutorial on these star ornaments that I have shown you. I had shown them previously when I shared my um, artist training box, and I've made these out of stamps and paper and these paper mache stars. Um, they have all uh, different shapes. I have circle hearts and star here, but I also have this um, oval shape. So I think they're available now. It's um, already there's a lot of Christmas stuff out there, so you can go ahead and grab them. Um, my mic just happened, yeah. Um, so for today, I thought we'd do this little snowman one because <coughs> excuse me, there's not a lot of coloring to this. Because obviously, if you're going to do white, well, what are you coloring with Copic? People use the BG pen, I think it is. BG pen. Yeah, BG pen. And you just put a little line around, and it's kind of like a shadow line. It's just giving the, the illusion that they're shadow there, color on white, because my paper's white. And I do use the Nina Solar White cardstock when I color with my Copic. Um, and so that's what I use. I did also just start another little artist training block. And I did these little girls, these um, fairies, with uh, watercolor paper. And I colored these with my distress markers because I'm running out, and I'm also running out of this thin tone of the distress marker, too. But I need to figure out or look into um, ink for your pens. My, a lot of my pens are running out of color. So when we do some coloring, you might hear some squeakiness, but that means I need to re-ink my pen. So I got to look into that. Um, so for today, we're going to, like I said, we're going to work on this little guy. So you're going to need a paper mache star or any shape, but these guys really fit nicely on the star because of the tall shape. Um, <coughs> I also picked my stamps, and these stamps happen to be Lawn Fawn. These are the Critters in the Snow um, stamp set, and it has these cute little critters. I'm going to do uh, a couple more while I'm, after I'm done, I'm going to work on a couple more for my response pack, so, um, no, that's not what we're using. We're using these, sorry, the paper snoopers. I'm going to be doing these when I craft this. Um, we're going to use these, this paper snoopin'. It's called, um, I don't know what it's called. Oh, Swanky Snow Bees. That's cute. I'm going to use this tall one, this little guy, and this medium guy. Um, and then the, the trees that I'm going to be using are actually from the Hero Art stamp set. This stamp set. I just really like this tree, and it colors up really quickly and easily. And this little bird. This is another Hero Art stamp set. Um, and it's just this little bird. I cut the tail off, but I just like these little ads, too, with how he has his head in the air. Um, and so that's it. So what you just need to do is find any stamp that you like that says, what's Christmas to you, it could be an angel, it could be, you know, whatever you want it to be, and you're going to go ahead and start to stamp those out. Like I said, I have, um, I'm going to put this to the side a little bit so that I can, I know I'm not going to bump into it. I've already stamped out quite a few, um, and I'm just going to show you what I've done uh, real quick for those of you beginners, um, because it's a, it's a process. The, uh, you know what? The first, the very first thing you want to do, though, is cut your uh, star. So it comes as paper mache. Um, paper is a porous surface, okay? When I painted for years um, wood, I would paint on wood mostly uh, for the most part, and I, we always would seal the surface somehow. And we weren't really into gesso. Gesso is something new for me. It's more, um, it's come into play more with the uh, mixed media. I would just use an all-purpose sealer and mix that with my paint to base coat because generally you are base coating your piece a solid color. And then once you've done that, let it dry. So in this case, I use gesso because all I really wanted to do is give it a little, um, make sure it seals so that the glue holds so that everything, um, you want to prepare your surface. I mean, I am selling these, hopefully, and I don't want them falling apart. I don't want the paper to come off or anything. So it's really best to do the work. I hate the press. I've always hated press. you got to stand. you got to, you know, just base coat. I love the detail. But you got to do the prep work to get to that point. So uh, all I've done is a light coat. Oops, where did I put my star? 
um, let me just put this, um, a light coated gesso. And gesso is, I like this gesso. It's the Liquitex um, Acrylic Gesso. I don't know if it's any different than the rest of them. It's a, it's a pink, I don't know. It's opaque, it's a matte finish, and it's fluid. It's about halfway fluid. I sat in the one in the jar before, but I like this. You shake it up and you just squirt it out on your um, paint palette, and it, it, I love it. I like this one because it's worth it. It's just easy access and easy to get to. Um, so that's what I use. I just put a light coat. Like you can see, it's not, it's not completely opaque. It's all a little see-through. Let it dry, and then give it a light pouring down. I just use this fine, um, it's like a sandpaper pad or something, and um, I sand both sides and the edges just so that it's smooth again. Not, you don't have to sand the heck out of it. Just get that, because when, when the gesso dries, it has like a grit to it. And so you just want to get that smooth again. And then what I've done next is I've added this, the Martha Stewart Pearl, and this is the pearl color, but there are blue pearl, pink pearl, and all that. And I got this idea from uh, Nurse Tara. She always, she introduced me to this Martha Stewart pearl paint. She puts it as a, uh, a base for a lot of her projects. So I've just taken that and gone around the edges. Because you're not going to see anything but the edges, really. You're going to cover the ornament with paper. So then, once that's dry, so you can... You can base coat this red, green, blue, whatever. You don't even have to put paper on top the way I did, like the background paper. You can just base coat it a solid color if you don't, you know, I mean, do make use of the supplies that you have and, you know, add your own twist to it. You don't have to follow this exactly. Then I've chosen some papers that are kind of snowy looking. I'm going to do, because they are snowmen, and I really like this color because it is the bright blue. I'm going to, I'm not doing this exact blue ball paint or anything. I'm going to change it up a little bit because this is more of a greenish blue and I've already traced it. Um, you know what? I'm going to go over what I've done. I've already traced, traced your design, whatever you have, a circle, a heart, a, a star onto your paper and I'm just going to go over that with a, um, I guess a pad here would be fine. Just so that you can see it because when you cut it out, you're not going to cut on this line. You're going to cut about an eighth of an inch in. What I'm saying is, yeah, an eighth of an inch in. So that when you're finished cutting, the star is going to be on your star. You know, it's going to be on here, but you're going to have a little smidgeroon around the edge like this. And you can see that, how there's just a smidgeroon, so it's not perfect, like, it, as, as a matter of fact, this side of that star is much closer to the edge than that one. But, that's how I went about doing this. So, I'm gonna, I mean, I guess, I, I'm at eight minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can, I'm gonna get my cut off glitter here, if I can cut it off the mess. So, um, I wish you can see this, but I am going to cut just to the inside of that line. So you can see, I'm not on the line. All right, so I'm going to go away and come back in a minute. Oops, guys. I, you can see how I've gone just to the inside of that line, okay? And my star is here. I kind of fudged it around. I turned because the way I traced it, I forget how I traced it now. But these aren't perfect. You know what I mean? It's made out of paper. It's wonky. The edges aren't, you know, completely square. But it fits on here just fine, just for a little background color. And you can still see that pearl shining through. So that's all set. Um, the other one thing I didn't mention too is these come with this little um, hanging string, and I just pulled that off because we're going to add our own hanging string um, with a little eye hook. Um, also, it has a sticker on the back, and I did my best to get them off. I didn't knock myself out. I did. Some of them come off better than others, but um, if you can just get gesso over that, um, if there's any left, 
that's fine. Like that much is fine. And so this will go over it. And then we're going to glue um, the paper down to that. So the next thing I'm going to do here is, you know what, we might as well, oh, also, if you guys want to ink this up, if you guys are inkers, because I know a lot of you love to ink your edging and it would look awesome. I haven't ever done that yet on any of my ornaments. I've just kept them clean, um, just with the paper. And so I won't be inking. And it's also an extra step, I feel. And if it's a gift for someone or if it's some, something special that you really wanted to add that effort, then um, go ahead. But I am selling these, and I'd like to make them as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. So I'm not going to be um, adding any inking to the edging. So I'm just going to add my little stop wet dry, quick dry adhesive. This is my favorite wet glue of the moment. Um, I've mentioned before that there are so many different adhesives, and I want you to use what you're most comfortable with, what you prefer, your favorite adhesive. I uh, mentioned that I do live in New Jersey, and it does get humid here. We've had such a beautiful um, summer, though, and fall. Um, and I also use my tweezers when I'm gluing. I pick up my paper, and I can line it up that way. It's just helpful. You still have a little fudge time when you use a wet glue. I say fudge time. I mean, a little bit of time to smush it around into place so that you're comfortable. And I don't know that I put that where I had it initially, but that's fine. It is what it is. <laughs> and you'd want to do that for the back as well. So you just paste your piece onto the paper and just cut a little bit inside that um, the line that you draw. Okay, so that's how, that's pretty much it for your stars right now. Once you've painted it, um, sanded it, and then you glue your paper on. The next thing you want to do, oh, I was talking about adhesives. Um, a dry adhesive, I'm a big ATP fan. I have the big old pink one, and I love it. I do. I'm, I'm starting to get back to it more. Um, when making those mini albums, I have to say I did go back to it a little more um, than I thought, and I'm just hoping for the best, because I've had times when it comes unstuck. It, the pe when the piece sits in the basement and it's damp down here, um, I'm finding that from time to time certain ones will be unstuck, so uh, I just don't like that. I don't like any adhesive. Thank you. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to pull in my images. Now, I've already stamped these, like I said, on um, Nina Solar White cardstock. Um, that's the paper of choice people like a lot of times when you're using Copic markers. And Copics are an alcohol-based marker. They're expensive. Um, there are other brands out there. Um, I can't think of the name of them right now. Gosh, I'm so brain dead, you guys. Um, Spectrum Free of Food Beauty. I just had a lot of those. <laughs> Spectrum Noir. continue to use them. I don't know um, if you want to invest in those. You can color these any way you want. Like I said, I use my Distress Inks to color these, and they look perfectly fine. They're a little more pastel-y. There are so many ways that you can color images. So just do what your favorite coloring technique is, and let's get started. So like I said, I use this EG10. That's the color that they suggest that you use when you're um, just trying to give white a little shadow. It's just a little shadow on your white. And of course, I'm not telling you not to put Kaylee off the bottom. But all I'm going to do here is just give him a little shadow here and there that just kind of brings him to life. And I'll do the same thing, maybe um, go around the back of his head and then under his scarf, down the side of his scarf, maybe along his arm. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. You just have fun. Make it your own. No one, I uh, hopefully going to be judging me. I don't, you know, people, they're going to love them. They're so cute. All right, so that's it. Like, your snowman is basically co colored. I did use the um, blue, green, and red for my colors that I use to color in their hats and scarves. So I'll just show you real quick. I'm not a professional Copic colorer. And I, like I said, a lot of my colors, I would usually use Sean. 
as my lighter red and it's it's drying up so I'm using this so it's nice and juicy and then I'm using lipstick red R29 as my red and I just I don't even know if I'm on camera I'm not sure I am so this isn't this isn't what I'm teaching you I'm just trying to walk you through the process that I do to make this orange so basically I'm just giving my images oh I'm coloring the wrong one that's great because I got ink on him see that <laughs> let me see this guy uh, oh it's not coloring it's tagged in and you know what you don't even have to stay in the line just try not to get it on um, the uh, the white of the snow because um, we're cutting these out so what I mean is you don't have to like be on the line uh, on the top part so you just want to not get it on the snow near the feet so anyway that's it I you know what I'm not I am not picky enough to get what color did I do I like blue for the um, this little guy has blue a blue hat I like to use the lighter blue and blue buttons really sorry I'm not on camera this is crazy um, but like I said this isn't really about um, coloring this is more about how I assemble this little group so um, there are a lot of really good um, coloring tutorials out there that will be zoomed in and um, you'll really learn a lot I am just having fun I mean you don't I'm not getting crazy about it. This is done. I just need to do these two and they would be done, but what I've already gone ahead and done that and cut them out. So now I have my little images that we're gonna use. I did the little bird and I did two trees. And all I did for my trees is I color them the background with a light green and then I just kind of like take a darker green and go over the branches, that's it. So not much to that. So here's our teeth. And actually before I put this down, we're gonna do a little trim around the edge of um, the star and put our hanger on. So I'm gonna gather those supplies up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I gathered a few things. I just picked this up by the school for a dollar at Joanne. And I was looking for this pin on here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit bigger. This is the same thing, only it's a little narrower. So I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna go ahead and use it. I don't think the blue would look right. So I'm gonna put some of the red bead chain on top of that. And then to hold, and I use ribbon for the, the hanger with just a piece of decorative ribbon, any color is fine. This happens to be silvery and um, silver and white. Um, hold on, I think I'm gonna, uh, so I've also got these, these are the little um, eye plated screw ups, they call them. Um, these are usually in, you can find these in your wood department. So I gave some more of my wood. They just are hanging with the little wooden bags, let's say. So um, hopefully these aren't too small. I bought these for resin. You also want to try to find one of your ends that's a little bit more put together. That, because some of them have like cracks. So I don't think that would be able to hold this eye hook in there. Um, so I'm going to kind of just do it by hand real quick. I'm just going to push and turn. Just kind of push it in and then just screw it in. And I mean, it, it's screwing in, so I'm pretty happy. Um, I could probably put a little bit of glossy acrylic on this at the end, and I think I will. Just around that bottom area to kind of give it that extra hold, if that's what I need to um, screw my ribbon to. So we've done that. I mean, I also have actually taken my ribbon and gone all the way around the edge and come up to here, tied it, and used that ribbon as your tie as well. So like I said, this is just how I've done this. Please don't 
use your own creativity because I am a cutter and I like when people show me what they did so I don't have to think about it. Um, and so that's what I'm just doing here. I'm just showing you what I've done, but by all means, do your own thing. So I'm using my favorite ribbon glue. This is fabric cutter, and this is a permanent adhesive. It binds fabric, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trim. I mean, pretty much everything. <laughs> um, it's just easy. I love it. It's really easy. See, look, when you get straight, sometimes it's kind of like hot glue a little bit. So I'm going to start right at the edge next to my um, little um, punch here and just block that down in the center, hold it in place, and gently walk it along the edge. It really, it dries pretty quickly too, that's why I love it too. Um, like it, and it's tacky, see how I just touch that down and it like stays where you put it. It's, it's really good, I can't recommend it enough. Aileen's has a tacky glue that people are really happy with too and I might try that next time too, or just get that, I haven't tried with that, but as far as trims go, fabric, um, I just crush this. I've never, I mean, I've put stuff on with my hot glue gun on a box or something, and it's it's fallen off. Like, you can pull it off very easily. This does not pull off. At least I've never seen it. Okay. So I'm just gently tapping it into place where I want it to stay. It's very squishy, guys. So, see, look, like now it's on my finger. I just kind of go like this, and it rolls right off. It'll roll up on your finger, so it's it's good that way too. It doesn't like doesn't burn. It doesn't hurt. I I can't rec I always say that, but I I'm a very um, loyal glue girl, I guess. <laughs> when I find that one that works, I'm gonna stick with it. So I'm just continuing all the way around the edge. I am going to go ahead away and cut the other piece of paper for the back. Put that on. Um, and I think I'm going to adhere the ball the balls to the edge too. And if I have any trouble or if there's any um, thing I want to mention to you guys, I'll mention it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the fabric cutter. And I'm just gonna guide it along just like I'm doing here and touch it where I want it to stay just the way I've done this with that ball pin. And it works, because working with ball pin isn't the same as like a flat back ball, because flat backs will stay where you want them easier because the ball is round. So that just gives it a little bling, a little hint of something. So I feel that's good. It's, it's a little narrow. I wish it was a little wider. I'm just going to push it into the corners a little better and go away and come back. I'm going to put the, the back paper on and I'm going to let that dry a little while and just while I'm just putting the other paper on, then I'll um, put this red bead in. This is, you can get this all over the place. I mean, I think AC Moore and Michael sell this for like a dollar. This is actually kind of a thick one. Um, I don't know if it's too thick. No, this is the same size as the blue. Um, I think that's going to look pretty. And you can still see the silver behind it. It'll be good. All right, but you got to, um, I don't think I need to really do that on camera. Like I said, maybe I'll just do the last little bit of it so that you can see how I've done it. Um, but I'll go away and come back. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back, and I did end up plugging in my glue gun. So... The balls, I mean, this has been sitting a while, and it's it's on there. It's just not, it takes longer. It's very tedious. So I just thought I'm going to try my glue gun. So I'm just going to do that. I only have this little bit. I mean, it's on there with the fabric cutter. But I'm going to show this with the glue gun. And this is my old, oh, Lord. Come on. I don't know if my glue's hot back there. But you can always do, like, 
a little piece at a time. Stick it in there and hold it. Try not to burn yourself. But this dries so much quicker. I don't know that it's as secure because that's the thing about hot glue with me. I think you could just rip it right off the flat of board. I don't want to give you a headache with this project. I mean, you don't even have to put this little ball of stuff on here because it is a tedious process to get, um, sorry, I know I'm not on the shot, but my glue is not coming down. Um, I need to add another stick. The, uh, I just love the look of it, you know. It's really pretty when it's on here. But there are so many trims, different trims you could use. Just a piece of um, ribbon, a regular ribbon. There's ribbon with fibers in it. Um. Okay, so the star is pretty much complete. I'm going to add my uh, characters to one side. Let's see, I kind of like, I think I like this guy better. So I've got two trees and three snowmen. That's why I like the star for this project too. Like there's a, t I can stick one of the trees up really high and one kind of low because the snowmen are going to be in front of it anyway. And that way it looks like there's variation to these. This guy, he's tall. So I'm going to put him, I'm going to put him there for now. Okay. Let him take up that whole side there. And I'm going to glue those black directly onto the piece. I've already added hot dots to my medium size. This is the 3M tape that I love. And then for my little guy, I've added a little slightly bit higher hot dot. And I've got the 3M tape on my bird too. So I'm going to go ahead and I apply these with my quick dry adhesive. This hasn't been too horrible. I have to go up and have a look at it. Um, but I do have a couple more to make, so I can always redo it. And that way, once you've done it once, I can kind of see where my mistakes are. Oh, I have these stars as well. I have a couple of um, wooden stars. I also have a cute little button. Let me show you these. Little buttons. You could use sequins, but I've with silver because I did use the silver on the edge. Um, I already put my silver leafing pen on these. These are wooden. But then I'm going to put silver stickers on them too. And then I did these too. These are the ones Mary Allen gave me. I have another one of these around here somewhere that I also put um, my silver leafing pen on. But I thought that would be cool like one of those stars. Alright, so anywho. Uh, put some adhesive on this. So that was my last, I just changed my last battery, so hopefully I'll get through this and then I'll go have a look at what I did. So I'm just kind of lining this up, I have to have room for the star, so I'm going to put that all the way to the bottom. That's what I love about wet glue, you can move it around a little bit. Maybe I should stick down with a an older wet mix, not like a brand new wet wet mix. All right, and I'm going to put my snowman down with the quick dry adhesive too because I want him flat up against the star. a little hanging off on the top I think with the c-tip I always ever since I used to paint I always had a c-tip handy on my desk because it just gets some space and I'm just kind of keeping that um, glue out from behind here so he's on there good enough and then I have hot dots on this guy so I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing of that and kind of position him where I want him Overlapping a little bit. I kind of, I don't 
like this place and I don't love it. I like it. It's good. So I, I can be a perfectionist even though I'm a good enough kind of reader. I like to be good enough, but I also want it to be really nice. And he'll be good on it. But he's in, he's on like a little bit of a higher path that, that you can see the dimension of that. So that it gives the illusion that he's in front and front and front. So then I'm going to put my little guy, my little birdie down in this corner. He's just with the, um, the 3M pop that. These just give it enough lift. They're not really high, and I like that. And you can buy it on a roll. It's, um, it's usually it's kind of in the, uh, it'll be in the uh, framing section sometimes at Michael's, but I get mine at Walmart cheaper. So I'm just going to, I cut off his feet just to make it easier, but I'm going to put him right there. And then my stars, I'm going to put on top of the trees, obviously. Then I'm going to add stickle. I'm going to use Babby Cat for this. And I, I usually um, use stickles, Linkistella. Um, you can use um, gel pens, like any type of linen thing to just jazz it up, give it a little sparkle. I'll probably just use a thin piece of red ribbon to thread through. I could use white, red, put that on his feet. So for stickles, I like, there's a couple of, I have tons of white stickles, like crystal stickles. This one's called Icicle, Diamond, Icicle, and then there's another one that's a uh, diamond, but there's one other one. Anywho. Um, it has a fatter nozzle, this one, Stardust. I'm pretty sure this is it. No, that has a thin nozzle. I'm going to use the Stardust for the um, snowman. I just like to put a little bit maybe above his, um, like, you know, sitting on there, you know. Maybe a little above his button. Um, a little above his scarf, too, on his arm. And maybe on his little button. Maybe it wouldn't be below his hat, but whatever. I can put it on his nose. Put a couple on nose. Just to give it a little fun. Just to have fun with that. All right, and then the silver. But I, what I was going to say was, this has a nice thin nozzle. And I like the color it comes out. This one's called Stardust, but one of them has a lot of grooves in it. Icicle. This one's like a fatter nozzle, and it comes out really fat. And it's like um, a flatter. Like this one even looks a little green, the diamond. But I really like the stardust. And then I have the silver. This is just called, well, it doesn't have a name, actually. And I could just rub this all over the stars. And I give that a little break. I kind of, well, I'm, I, I don't do glitter glitter, true glitter anymore as much. I just use stickles anymore. Because it's so easy. You don't have to get glitter everywhere. I do glitter everywhere when I use glitter. Maya and I made some Halloween last year once, and we had glitter <laughs> everywhere. And um, so that's it. So that's kind of pretty, right? And you put your little, hang your little ribbon through there. Let that dry, and there you go. All right? So that's it, basically. And like I said, I've done it with other stamp sets. This, I use more of like a wallpaper paper behind it, I put, you know, instead of like a snow scene. I kind of, it's a plaid. And then I use my um, glossy accents to make the the grass shiny and the, you know, and, and, the, and the little ball, uh, the lights hanging on the uh, fireplace, I made them shiny. So don't forget to add your little accents. I mean, this you could definitely put more stickles around the edges and just really go crazy. You could put a sentiment on the back. You could say Merry Christmas, say best wishes, happy holidays, whatever you want to do. So that's it, you guys. I hope this comes out all right. I'm going to go have a look. And um, for those of you that requested it, there it is. And thanks for watching.